On today's show, despite VW's emissions scandal, other automakers still support the diesel engine. ZF wants your car to automatically steer away from an accident, and Tesla files a federal lawsuit so it can sell cars directly to consumers. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. New products are what this business is all about, and Chevy just revealed an all-new Equinox. New from the ground up, it shed 400 pounds and offers a host of new features. The reworked interior features all the latest in infotainment technology, as well as either a 7 or an 8-inch display screen. And for easier loading, the rear seat now folds down to reveal a flat floor. Customers will also have a choice of three turbocharged four-cylinder engines, a 1.5-liter, a 2-liter, and for the first time in North America, a 1.6-liter diesel. GM expects 40 miles to the gallon on the highway with that diesel engine. And the Equinox goes on sale in the first quarter of next year. And General Motors is not the only automaker showing that the industry is not giving up on diesels. Bentley will offer a diesel for the first time in its history in the new Bentayga SUV. The 4-liter V8 engine is both twin-turbocharged and electrically supercharged and develops over 600 pound-feet of torque. It's the same setup that Audi's using in the SQ7, and as you may remember, this is an electrical supercharger powered by a 48-volt system. That allows the supercharger to supplement the turbos to eliminate any lag. But if you'd like to learn more about these 48-volt systems, check out our recent AutoLine After Hours with Matty Vint from Vallejo, North America. Vallejo is the company that's supplying that 48-volt technology for Audi and Bentley, and Matty goes into a lot of detail about the system. Mercedes-Benz took the wraps off the next-generation electric version of the Smart 4 II. It's powered by an 80-horsepower electric motor and a 17.2 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery. Based on the European driving cycle, the coupe will have a range of 99 miles, while the convertible is rated at 96 miles. The range for the U.S. models will be revealed later, but they'll likely be lower than the European ones because the U.S. test is harder. The convertible version will not hit dealerships in the U.S. until the summer of 2017, and that really puzzles us. Why would Mercedes be introducing a car like this half a year after the Chevy Bolt EV will be out with a range of 240 miles? Tell you what, that smart electric better have a killer price or it's going to be DOA, dead on arrival. Lexus wants to put holograms in your dashboard. More about that right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. Earlier this month, Lexus teased a shot of a new crossover concept called the UX. Now we get to see what the interior looks like. And just like the exterior, it features a jagged edge design theme. In the auto industry, the term UX refers to user experience, and that's an appropriate name for this CUV. The company says all the HMI technology has been designed to give riders a connected 3D experience. It even features a couple of hologram displays in the driver's instrument cluster and center console. Other technologies include electrochromatic windows, which work just like self-dimming mirrors, the side view mirrors are replaced by cameras and a removable sound bar is built into the passenger side of the dashboard. Remember, this is just a concept, but it sure points the way to what Lexus will be bringing out in the future. Tesla's upping the ante against the state of Michigan, which has banned the company from selling cars directly to consumers. Tesla is suing the state in federal court and seems to want a legal precedent that would apply to all 50 states. Right now, Tesla can sell direct to consumers in all but four states. But some of the other states have put a cap on the number of stores that it's allowed to open. Up to now, Tesla has been fighting franchise laws one state at a time. But by filing in federal court, 
it could get a ruling that applies to the entire country. Both the state of Michigan and Tesla are taking big risks. By not allowing Tesla to do any business in the state, Michigan invited this lawsuit. It should have conceded some limited number of stores. And Tesla is taking a big risk because if it loses in federal court, its sales model would be threatened. So what do you think? Should Tesla be allowed to sell cars as it wants to, or should it be forced to go through a franchised dealer network? Yesterday, we showed you a four-wheel steering system that ZF is developing for full-size pickup trucks. Here's another technology it's working on, emergency steering. The idea is to have a car automatically steer away from an obstacle in the road if the driver does not take action. Right now, the system only turns to the left, but they're still developing the technology. Future iterations will be able to turn either right or left, depending on which way the car senses is the safest way to turn. The North American auto industry is running at record levels, but what kind of threats could be looming out there? We'll take a look into that right after this. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. The auto industry went through dramatic turmoil in 2008 due to the Great Recession. Today, the industry is stronger than ever. But how much longer can the good times roll? On AutoLine this week, I'm joined by a team of experts from the Center for Automotive Research. In the following clip, they discuss the biggest threats the auto industry faces. I think the biggest risk, in, more so than in unit sale, um, drop off is what is the mix change. So do truck sales drop off more if, if customers start to feel on the credit pinch and on the economy slowing down, will they go to a, a um, lesser price of, of a mix of the vehicle and then that dampens revenue and then that spreads down through the supply chain. Brett, what do you think are the biggest threats facing the industry? I, th I think that, that profit per vehicle is, is always going to be very important, and I think that's, they've done a good job with that. I also think that the cost of the vehicle itself is getting so high. I mean, right now you're talking $32,000, $33,000 per average vehicle transaction. That's really expensive. You're limiting the market the more expensive it gets, and as we've talked over the years, Regulation is going to make that happen even more so, whether it be powertrain technology, whether it be connected automated technology, safety technology, and you know the one that consumers will pay for, the stuff they want. You're going to see vehicles get more and more expensive. Um, the challenge becomes, are you disciplined enough to keep that price point for the vehicle manufacturers? Are you going to start putting money on the hood of the vehicle to make sales so you can keep the plant going? Or have we, in fact, gotten to a disciplined point, as Bernard talked about? Yeah. And, and on the credit, credit side, right, we've been living in this environment of such low cost of capital with our low interest rates. And so we've refinanced both the, the consumer and the corporations. So as you look out a couple of years and you look at a, a, um, a fall off of when will that debt need to be restructured and, and paid back, and that's a real threat. And Bernard, your thoughts, greatest threats facing the industry yeah, you right know, now. So I'd build a little bit about, uh, onto what Brad said, which I think is absolutely correct. Um, because at the same time that is happening, uh, we've also got a, an uncertain economic environment. So when we passed CAFE back in 2009, we've had a ramp up in terms of adding vehicle technologies at a time when a market's growing and the economy <clears throat> excuse me, is solid. What happens now if we have an acceleration of standards, an acceleration of expensive technology to put on the vehicle and the economy goes soft on us, right? And we're in that environment trying to sell that expensive vehicle. So the forecastable parts uh, that we're looking at all look good. It's a question of what's out there that we can't have visibility into. For more of an outlook from the Center for Automotive Research, you can watch that entire show right now on our website, autoline.tv, or find it on our YouTube channel. And you can also follow us socially on Facebook and Twitter. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.
The Wards Auto UX Conference will explore the latest technologies and consumer expectations for tomorrow's automotive user experience. See presentations from FCA and Continental on strategies for branding UX and hear a keynote from Dave Lyon of Pocket Square, an innovator in the field of user experience design. We will recognize the winners of Wards Auto's 10 Best UX Awards and you can check out all the winning vehicles on the show floor. Join us October 4 in Novi. Register now at wardsauto.com slash UX.